magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20. To, to do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large power. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're gonna need some resources. In magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn, you may play a land from your hand. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to... Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. Now, he will cast a spell. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like crazed Power is the amount of damage a creature deals in combat. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to- Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crim- He had to use up or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Mana costs can be more complex than Crazed Goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana and two of the mana must be green. When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have... Now it's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To cast this spell, play a second land, and then choose the creature that costs two green mana. This creature's power and toughness are 3-3. Three, three. More than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. Now, Crimson Mage will play a land and then attack us with the crazed goblin. The crazed goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. During the combat damage step, each creature deals damage equal to their power. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. Play another land. Now it's our chance to attack Crimson Mage.
Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage... You don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so... Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your rumbling Bayloth yet, because it has summoning sickness. It's important to know that, in magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. Unless the card says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creature. try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, now attack with both of your creatures. It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Blood Rocks. During the main phase after combat, go ahead and play your land. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature next. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. Things are look... Attack with everything. In Quest 2, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells.
For your second quest, you'll be using a black deck. Black special- We arrived to this game already in progress. As you can see, a lot of duel- This looks promising. You've drawn Assassinate, a sort- Assassinate is a card that can destroy a creature of your choice, as long as it's tapped. Since you're at two life, you'd better use it on Azure Mage's creature before it kills you. Now, Azure Mage will cast some spell. Now, your opponent has a creature that has a special ability. Without another Assassinate card, you have no way to... Now you're in serious trouble. That Goliath Sphinx can Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with your Vampire Nighthawk? If you do, you won't have any untapped creatures to block. Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with your Vampire Nighthawk? Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with your Vampire Nighthawk?
an interesting decision. Do you attack with your vampire Nighthawk? on a powerful sorcery. Rise from the grave can reanimate creatures It appears safe to attack with your zombie Goliath. for the win. As you play more magic, you'll run into many kinds of spells and creature abilities. Look for spells that fit your play style. In Quest 3, we'll learn about spells third quest, you'll be using a white deck. White's specialty is amassing an army of You've drawn an enchantment. Enchantments are powerful spells whose effects are See how your creature's power and toughness have increased? Now, attack Onyx Mage with your improved creatures. Also, your Honor of the Pure will affect all your creatures as long as it remains on the battlefield. Onyx Mage has put a stop to your advancing army. If you attack now, the results might not be good. Perhaps waiting might be the best strategy for now.
Now you have a chance to take care of this Minotaur problem. Creatures have the ability to block in groups. In this... a special kind of enchantment, an aura. While enchantments affect the game globally, auras affect specific things, usually creatures. This one looks especially useful right now. This aura allows you to target any creature on the battlefield. Now that the nightmare has been pacified, it's time to renew your attack. Onyx Mage has cast an aura on your glory seeker. Night Guard Patrol has some special abilities. Zoom in on it to learn more. for the win. As you play more magic, remember that enchantments can help you win the game, either by improving your creatures, removing your opponent's creatures, or other cool effects. In Quest 4, we'll learn some tricky spells and interactions. For your fourth quest, you'll be using a blue deck. Blue's specialty is disrupting its opponent's plans, drawing cards, and... Jade Mage cast an instant. Instants were...
Ashuron Cancel, a spell that counters another one. Countering stops a spell from happening. When if you attack now, you'll be in danger of losing the game. Better not attack until you have better choices. Okay, now Jade Mage has cast another giant growth. But it Now you've cast a spell, Cancel, targeting Jade Mage's spell. Jade Mage has cast another giant growth, but instead of letting Now you've cast a spell, can Archaeomancer, a creature with a triggered ability. That means when something specific happens, this card will automatically... Normally, blocking creatures take all the damage from the attacking creature, but if a creature with Trample is blocked, it will deal enough damage to kill the... Unless you stop the timer to counter this spell, the Duskdale Worm will probably kill you.
Normally, blocking creatures take all the damage from the attack. Unless you stop the timer to counter this spell, the Duskdale Worm will are powerful ways to surprise your opponents or thwart their plans. Practice using the stack with tricks like Giant Growth, Cancel, and others. In Quest 5, we'll suit up interesting creatures with equipment. For your final quest, you'll be using a red deck. Red specialty Prodigal Pyromancer, a creature with an act. Just like attacking, abilities that require attack. Alabaster Mage has cast an equipment. It usually improves a creature. Casting an equipment spell only puts it on the battlefield. To attack,
auras. If a creature with an attached equipment leaves the battlefield, the equipment remains ready. Like equipment, there are many artifact cards in Magic. Artifacts are usually colorless. This means that you drew Torch Fiend. It has an activated ability that doesn't require Dragon Hatchling. It's act. Volcanic Dragon. It has hate. and act 
activated abilities are interesting tools that can mean the difference between victory and defeat. <laughs>